I'm giving you three fingers. You see three? See them? I can do it on this finger too. I can get three. Look at three fingers on your own hand. Just look at those three fingers. I'm going to teach you three things this morning. Three things I want you to ingrain in your spirit. These three things, and listen to me and make a bold statement on it, will fulfill all the commandments of God. It's going to be three words. So when you see the three, we know it means Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It means many different things. On the third day, it means many different things when you see three. These three here are going to represent something that I want you to remember, something I want you to hold on to. And when you hold on to what I'm about to give you, even in the absence of all the Bible, this will focus you and direct you into what you need to do so that the favor of God will rest upon you. Three things. Please tell your neighbor, Bishop's got three things he wants us to remember. When you see this, it's going to remind you of three words. And those three words, I'm going to emphasize, I'm going to tell you the message. I want you to understand these three words are the key to unlocking the power and the favor of God on your life. The power and the favor of God on your life, right here. You know, when Spock would do Live Long and Prosper, he got it from his priest. For where it was, he got the high priest used to do this, represent Shen, it's a Hebrew word. I'm giving you three. You can think about Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but also when you see it, it also gives you the image of the first letter of every word I want you to remember. That's a W. You do this as a W. And the first thing I want you to think about is the Word of God. I want you to lock it in. And I don't really want you to take any notes now because I'm going to give you enough stuff on notes. I need your minds now. A devotion to the Word of God is the key to unlocking the power. It's the first key that you've got to use. There are three of them, and I'm giving you here three. When you see the three, it's W. First thing I want you to remember is going to be the Word, the Word of God. You've got to have a relationship with the Word of God. You've got to know the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you, God, in light, I'm going to give you a, a wonderful blessing for you to hold on to right now. You get the word. Amen. I'm giving you the word. Amen. And you've been faithful. Many of you all are here all the time. I do need to make it perfectly clear. The absences will cause you to miss what God intends for you to have. There will be places where there will be gaps in your knowledge of the word. I know other pastors have things, that, and they have things you can go to at their churches and other things you might be doing, family reunions and all that other kind of stuff. I know that. But I want you to understand that when God put you into a family, you didn't choose who your mama and daddy were. Amen. And I need you to understand the truth is you can't choose who your pastor is supposed to be either. When God gives you a person that's your pastor, that's your shepherd. And to miss hearing from your shepherd means missing hearing from what God intended for you to get. Amen. You got to understand the importance of this. And I say to God in life, I'm giving you the word. I'm going to give you these three points that are going to change your life. It's unfortunate that there may be some people that are not here that won't hear it, won't be in the moment to understand it because they're confused. They don't understand. You can't float and visit at this time. Visit at other times. But when God has sent you to a church, and this is your house, and God has given you a shepherd, that's the one that's supposed to bring the word for you to hear. Right. It's all right to visit, but don't visit when the shepherd that God has put over you is trying to lead you where God says you should be led. Right. You need to get this. I'll give you time. 
I'll give you time to talk about this later on. But the word is a key ingredient, and I'm fixing to give you three important points right now. And I'm going to emphasize them, I'm going to make the point clear. The word is the first thing to unlock the power and favor of God. You got to have it. Second thing, not only do you have to have the word, but you're going to have to know how to worship with that word. That's the second W. Worship. And what we were just doing a minute ago was entering into worship. Many of you have the word, and if you got the word but don't know how to worship, you're missing out on what God got for you. There are a lot of academic and intellectual geniuses in the word. But if you can't connect that word through worship to the Holy Spirit, you ain't got nothing. All you are is a nerd. You got, that's right, a nerd with no word. And what you got to do, you got to have that word comes alive by the Spirit. And you, you connect with the Holy Spirit through worship. See, the word represents, if you would, the word represents the Father, for God is his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was what? So God, and through worship, you encounter the Holy Spirit. If you don't know how to worship, then you, can't got, you ain't got no spirit. And if there's no spirit, there's no power. Yes, sir. Right. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You've got to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And that comes through worship. Yes, sir. It's great to have the word, but you've got to balance this thing off. You've got to have the second W, which is worship. A devotion to the word and a devotion must also be to worship. Yes, sir. Now, the third W is works. This is one that we're a long way off. We got to catch up with and worship too. But works are the works of God that you are to do in your life. I'm going to show you in the next few minutes that God created you for a purpose, not to live the way you want to live, but to live the way he created you to live. For a work, every one of you all has been given a work in the earth that God wants you to do. A work. You are to encounter God himself with the word. You study the word to know God. I know you want to go, go ahead. Okay, we'll take care of it. We pray for you. God be with you on that. Emergency becomes just something that needs to be handled right now. Now, you encounter God, the Father, through the Word. Through worship, you encounter the Holy Spirit. Now, if I've given you God, the Father, God, Holy Spirit, who's left? God, the Son, who did works on the earth. Jesus came to do work on the earth. You have been called to do works on the earth. And when you do works, you imitate Jesus. You become like Jesus. So each one of those W's represents the Father, the Spirit, and the Son. And when you practice each one of them, you become like the Father, you become more like Spirit, and you become like the Son. You become more like God in three simple words, word, worship, and works. And if you'll devote yourself to the word, to worship, to encounter the Holy Spirit, and then devote yourself to works, to do the works of Jesus in the earth, then God will give power and favor so that you can accomplish those things. Listen, you need to understand. Many of you want God to do stuff for you. God ain't going to do diddly squat for you because God don't do for you. God does for his glory. You need to hear that. I know God loved me. God going to take care of some of y'all lying. You don't know the truth. And you're being destroyed for a lack of knowledge that God does for his glory, not for yours. And you would know that if you knew the Holy Spirit through worship, you would understand that God created you for a purpose, his purpose, and not your purpose. And you will find out in the next few minutes that God wants us to have power and authority in the earth, and God created us for power and authority. But what we did, we said, we don't want to do it your way, we want to do it our way. And God said, if you want to do it your way, then you do it your way, but you won't have my power and authority to do it. And if you want power and authority and favor of God to flow through you, you got to do it God's way. God didn't create you to be a God. 
as much as I know that makes some of you get ticked off with me. But God created you to be a servant and him be God. He said, there'll be no other gods beside me. I'm a jealous God. And when you want to do what you want to do, you make yourself out to be God. You are the clay claiming to the potter. Then why'd you make me this way? I will make myself the way I want to be. And that's some nerve. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Here's a test. What's this represent? Three words. What are they? Right. Now, and here is, that's right, you made it simple. When I do it, it's going to be a what? A W to remind you of the first letter of every word that you will be devoted to in order to have the power of God and the favor of God to flow through you. When you learn how to make the word, to be devoted to the word of God, see what God has to say. When you learn how to use that word and with that word, worship almighty God. And when I say worship, I ain't talking about just standing up when everybody else is standing. Yes. I'm talking about you communicating yes. with the Holy Spirit. Bump everybody else at that moment. Yes. It don't matter what somebody else is doing. What's important is me and God. Spirit to spirit. Deep calling on the deep. See, we may not understand everything God, plan God got planned for us, but the Bible says it has been revealed to us by his spirit. And if we don't know how to communicate with the Holy Spirit, all we got is a whole lot of word and a lot of knowledge, but we don't have no power. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit that you got to have a connection with. And you, gotta, and you don't connect with the Holy Spirit just sitting there in the Word. The, the Word will ignite the fire of the Holy Spirit. But with, as Timothy was told, you got to fan that thing in the flame. You fan that in the flame when you get in a relationship with God and you start talking to God and Holy Spirit start talking from your voice. And then to be complete with it, you got to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. You got to be about walking the walk like Christ did. He said, I came to do the works of the Father. God created you so that you could be in the image of Jesus. Now, I told you, I just want you to listen for a minute. Because I'm just talking to you. I'm going to give you enough. You have a bunch of notes you can take in a few minutes. You know anything I tell you, I've researched it thoroughly. Means first word. Word. Worship. Worship. Works. A devotion to these things. Now look at your own life and say, okay, am I devoted to studying the word? He said, therefore, he said, do this. Be diligent to present your body. No, no, no. To be diligent and study the word so that you'll not be put to shame. What am I giving you? From Timothy, what's he say? Study, study. to show. That's See, that's the study of the word. Okay, study that. And then when worship comes, worship is another experience. And that worship is that experience. Let, let, me, let me make it real simple. I said this to the second, first service. When I give you three, it ought to remind you of another three. And it's going to remind you of another three. It's going to remind you of the tabernacle. It's going to remind you of the temple. Because you see, those works are done outside when you come to the altar, works, you're going to bring something, you're going to sacrifice something, that's works. And then when you get in the holy place, you go in the holy place, when, once you get in there, and when you get in the holy place, that's when you're dealing with your soul and you're dealing with your mind and your thinking that's going on. That's where the word is right there. And that's where the, the lamp of the Holy Spirit is there. And then you go back to that altar where you're worshiping and that's where the, uh, the worship goes up there. So you've got those three right there. But then when you get behind the cloud, you get behind that last curtain. That's where the glory of God falls. That's where nobody can work. That's where you just, that's where God pours it out on you. And that happens when you've done each one of those three. You start with the word, you go to worship and you do the works. Then you prove yourself worthy of the power and the anointing and the glory of God to fall on you. Amen. Now I just summarized what I'm fixing to give you. Now watch real quick. So we go through these notes now. Be as prompt as I can. This is a continuation of last week's message of allowing the power of Almighty God to flow through you. And as I've worked on it, God has refined it. So I give you this today's service text, three disciplines for power and absolute. Because I had favor at first, but God said, no, I will give them absolute favor. My favor, favor from me and favor among men. That's what God said to do. And all it is, when it comes right down to it, it's three things that's going to make that happen. And now I'm going to state my case as to why this goes this way. 
First of all, let me tell you this. From the beginning, it's God's intention that you have power in the earth. Get this through your head. God wants man to have power and authority in the earth. Amen. Proving my point. Now, now this is a substantiation. That's all it is. In Genesis 1:26. Watch this. He said, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Understand this point. Let us make man in our image and likeness. Why did God want us to be in his image and likeness? Because he wanted to put his power in us. He wanted us to be perfectly suited to receive his power and authority, his anointing and everything of him in us. He created you so you would be like him. You got to get this. The first thing he said, let us make man in our image and likeness. He didn't do that for nothing. He did that so that you be like him. God created you to have authority and power. Notice he said, and then let them have dominion. And it's dominion over the earth. We are like gods in the earth. God gave us authority over this earth. Now don't flip out over that. Because God has given you power and authority, but you need to understand the power and authority is his power and authority. And what we have done is ignored his power and his authority, and we want to do on our power and authority. To show you God got power for you, here's what he said in the 28th verse. He said God blessed them. He blessed them for what? So that they have power to do what? So that they have power to be fruitful and multiply. So that they have power to replenish the earth. So they have power, not only that, to subdue whatever thing came up against them. Yeah. That's power. And then not only do you put your foot on it and knock it down, you take dominion over yeah. it. Yes, sir. Here you go, what'd you say? Faster than a speeding bullet, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, stronger than a, than a speeding locomotive, locomotive. God made you to be supermen in the earth. That's what God created you for. Power. Tell your neighbor, I have been created to have power. Can't y'all see that? God blessed them and gave them power to do stuff. If God hadn't given the power, we couldn't do it. 